have lots of guest speakers today, and it's you're just going to get full of information. And Paul told me last year, don't give us too much information. We walked out last year and just our brains were on fire. And that's what I like to do. So by the end of the day, hopefully your heads will be steaming and everything will be turning and you'll be putting your hop yard together in your mind. And that will all come into fruition this spring when you start constructing it after Roger tells you how to do that this afternoon. So we wanted to um, give you some updates about what we're doing at UVM Extension right now in terms of research and outreach. And um, I'm gonna let uh, Rosalie take it from here. So this summer, Dylan Badger there and myself did um, uh, some research on organic fungicides on hops. So it was in a greenhouse. Um, we had some cascades and um, we sprayed different fungicides. There are reports on the back table. If you didn't get it, it's also on the website. Um, there was a minor mishap in that we didn't get any fungus at all in the greenhouse. However, <laughs> It's the problem with doing research with fungus. It doesn't grow when you want it to. Um, but we did learn some interesting things. Um, stylet oil, which is a white mineral oil, is really pretty phytotoxic. Um, if you apply it when it gets really hot, like it did last summer, it'll pretty much burn your leaves, um, which it did. And um, that's all written up in the report. Um, yes, please. So this is us planning the variety trial in Alberg. Um, the, the, the hop yard got built in the spring in April, but then our plants didn't arrive until August, um, which those of you who have planted hops realize is really late to be planting. Um, we got um, little plants as opposed to rhizomes. They got mailed from our collaborators in Washington. They showed up. Um, they'd been driven across the country in a refrigerator truck. Some of them were a little frozen. It came with a mite infestation. That was a lot of fun. Um, so, you know, we're really testing the hardiness of these varieties by, you know, putting them through hell and high water before <laughs> they can be successful. Um, also, this day, you can't really see it in this picture, but there was thunderclouds on the horizon. This is like 6.30 at night. We had the big field day the next day. It was traumatic. Anyway. Uh, so these are the um, 20 varieties that we planted, with the exception of Hallertau, which wouldn't propagate, um, and so we don't have it in the trial. They say they're going to send us rhizomes this year, but honestly, if it wouldn't propagate, it means it's not a very hardy variety and probably just won't do very well here. It's already a lower yielding variety, so it's kind of things aren't really looking good for it growing successfully in Vermont. These are a picture of our sad little hot plants. You can see all of the, uh, the, mite, the mite burn marks there. You can also see a little lady beetle who's having the time of her life. Um, so we did um, a little evaluation of the hop yard at the end of the season, just before first frost hit. And you know, after all the rigors that we put them through, some of them actually were doing OK. Newport looked great. Um, Nugget did surprisingly well. Usually it's pretty susceptible to mites. But um, I think because we also put Nugget in our cover cropping trial, we had a lot more plants to choose from to go into our variety trial, which is why I think it did a little bit better. Um, so we chose the best ones for the variety trial. Um, Tetanang, it, it just was not thriving. Um, a lot of plants died outright. Um, the mites really loved them. Fogo, also not really looking so great. Perola, Sterling. I mean, hopefully they'll recover, but already they're sh showing to be not very hardy in um, the situations of Vermont, I guess. So last August, we had a field day at Jean's Farm in Northfield, Massachusetts. Uh, there was a lot of people from Massachusetts and Vermont there. Um, some of you were there. I don't Anyway, learned a lot of great things. Jean showed us his um, dryer, which was made out of uh, Tyvek and a fan. Oh, yeah, that's you. <laughs> um, great, yeah, change slides. Um, and then in September, Roger and Heather and I went on a trip out to the Yakima Valley where we met with our collaborators on this grant that we're working on from Michigan, California, Colorado, and Washington State. Um, they're working on organic variety trial like we are. They're also doing some cover cropping stuff and some soil fertility. And uh, we went around and talked to a lot of hop growers. Um, you can see hops aren't really doing so great in the top right corner. 
that's corn in a hop yard. <laughs> Roger was really thrilled to see corn because he's like, finally, a plant I know how to grow. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, we also it was a um, good time. We learned a lot and can't wait to share all that knowledge with you guys. And do you want to take over? All right. So we wanted to um, talk a little bit about where we're headed now. And I already talked about the Northeast Hops Alliance and joining forces with them with our New England chapter. And, and again, um, Larry and Kate Fisher have just been, you know, if you get a chance to talk to them, now they're gonna, everybody's going to be calling you like they already do. Now you have all of New England calling you. They, they, <laughs> they have such a great experience, you know, more than any of us growing hops and also with harvesting. And they got sick of picking them by hand really fast um, and decided to venture to try to construct their own hop harvester. And we're doing the same thing right now uh, with funding again from the Massachusetts Department of Agriculture and the Agency of Agriculture here in Vermont. They have provided us with some funding to construct um, our own small scale hop harvester, two of them, hopefully. Um, and so Larry and Kate have been nice enough to tell us what not to do. <laughs> and all of the things and mistakes that they've made and all the improvements that they've made. And that's just really great that they're willing to share. So is Chris Callahan here yet? Chris Callahan is our consulting engineer that we're working with. He's a great guy. And um, he's working with, with us and um, Gene and Roger and Trevor and Larry and Kate as well to basically put together a design um, to build our own harvester here that will be well suited for small scale production. And we're trying to make the hop harvester mobile so that it has an opportunity to hopefully make it around to farms that need to use it. And I, I can't make any promises on that yet. There's, um, you know, this, you can see how tall it is here in the photo. So we're trying to figure out ways to make it um, horizontal or on, you know, able to, with hydraulics, lift up and down, but we're not, we're not sure yet. But the goal is to have the hop harvesters completed for this growing season because Gene told me if he didn't, that his wife Bonnie was going to leave him. So I don't want that to happen. Everybody who knows Gene knows Bonnie, and none of us want that to happen because she's just a phenomenal woman. So we will have hopefully that ready to, to go. Um, we're also received some funding through UVM and the, again the Department of Agriculture to develop um, a small scale hop baler and also a, a, a oast or a hop dryer um, prototype as well. And our goal is to make these things something that farmers can also build on their own or contract with someone to, do, to build for them and that it would be cost effective. And we are working with the UVM engineering department on the Baylor with three students that are here today, Brian, Ian, and Mike, if you guys could stand up. Thank you. So it's great to have three engineering students are taking this on as their senior project. Um, and hopefully that will be done. They're already stressed out about it. When will it be? May. July. 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 <laughs> um, so that hopefully will be ready this year too. So we've got a lot of exciting things uh, that you know we'll be reporting on. We're going to have some workshops and other outreach this summer, and hopefully these things will be ready to be beta tested, and then hopefully by next year make it out to to other people's farms. So something to look forward to. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. So um, besides doing the variety trial, Rosie mentioned that we're trying to focus on some other aspects of growing hops, some of the agronomics. One of the things we realized when we were in Washington is that this is uh, an area of hop production that we could really take the lead on. Um, hop production, as you know, out west is very, very input intensive. Um, and they are, you know, um, messing around a little bit with cover cropping and, and um, some organic production. But our knowledge and my knowledge of soils and biological farming, um, I think is gonna you know, play a huge role in what actually they end up doing in Washington in the future because this is our strength. Um, we, we know how to um, 
create and maintain and, and produce really healthy soils. And so one of the focuses that we're going to have in our hop yard this year is looking at cover crop management and biological fertility. And not, I, I know not everyone here is going to be an organic hop producer, and you don't have to be, but I do think that there are some really sustainable and low input practices that will help grow your hops um, in, a, in a more sustainable manner, a cheaper manner, and your soils will be healthier, and that will also help contribute um, to reducing disease issues and insect issues. So we will, I feel, be taking the lead on this, really, um, probably for our, our group across the nation. So that's really exciting. But we don't have much to report right now. Okay, so we are really busy trying to raise money to do all this work. Um, and we just received funding to do more peer-to-peer -peer networking, which is what you see here. Um, and we'll also be doing some more workshops this summer, and we're hoping to draw in the brewing community a lot more. And where's Mark Majera? Mark, could you stand up? Um, this is like a feel-good session for, for everybody. But Mark has just been a phenomenal resource to us from the brewing industry. He um, works at Bobcat Brewery. He's the brewer there. And he's just stuck by us, really trying to help us along the way. And he is going to help us um, hopefully draw in other brewers to work with us and with the farmers as well because really in order for hops production to move forward in this you know region we need all of us working together for that to happen um, we can't work alone I've done that before with farmers you know I can help produce really high yields for you guys with hops but if nobody's gonna buy them then all of our efforts are you know to the wayside so we want this to be an effort that we're moving along together so that we're all successful in the end. So, uh, you know, we're working on the drying pieces, the harvesting pieces. Uh, we want to get more education for ourselves so that we can help you with proper storage and harvesting. That's one thing we learned when we were in Washington is that harvest time is very critical, just like any other crop. If you want to get a high quality hop, then you need to harvest it at the right stage. Um, and it's not that easy to tell. I mean, for a lot of the people in Washington, it's taken them generations, and they pass that information on generation to generation of, oh, I just know it's ready. You know, how many times, oh, I just know it, I don't know how, I know how to bake a cake without measuring that out the ingredients, I just know how. So they have all this knowledge, and we're actually gonna go back and meet with them and try to get more of that knowledge to bring back here so that we can help you grow the best quality hops and make all the brewers happy. The brewers, does that sound good? Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we also have applied for another another grant um, to the, spe the National Specialty Crops Program. Um, there's a lot of interest in low trellis systems, and through this new grant, we'll be working again with Washington State and Colorado State um, and Michigan State to put out some low trellis um, trials and if we get that then you know we'll be looking at these systems here in New England as well and then further looking at fertility and pest management as well as some other aspects so this is new to all of us not just to most of the folks sitting here and we're working hard to get ourselves up to speed so that we can help you um, the best way possible and we are very much open to your feedback on if we're not doing something you know tell us and we'll try to do not everything you're supposed to do, but I don't listen that well.